Hello everybody, welcome back here at the Clevercord for another practicing session. Today I'm going to practice the E flat minor fugue. It will be a reading session, of course, I've played that piece several times. Even uh, This was even the piece I played in Cornell University in the United States during my concert there. It's on YouTube, you can find that if you wish. But it's a very difficult piece to read because of all, you know, playing in uh, uh, um, um, you know, in, in a tonality, in a key with so many sharps in this case, or with many flats, it's always like kind of exceptional. It feels a little bit awkward. And so I'm going to read this piece here together with you. I said the last time, clear the table of any interpretation, just enjoy the sound, read the notes at the same time, correct my fingering if I need to, or just read the fingering again um, because as you, if you are here a little bit longer you know and I'm going to make videos on that as well even build a course around that your fingering determines certainly in this kind of music a lot on how you're going to play that in other words fingerings quote unquote historical fingerings if you wish that's there is a lot of discussion there it's a gray zone sometimes but a kind of I would say really helps you building insight from the very start when you start to practice in building the structure in the interpretation if you wish wish of that piece and so it's important for me when I go back after not having played this piece for one or two years that I check the fingering very carefully and I read it so you read reading means that reading the notes and the fingerings together okay without further ado there we go just press here a button and you should see the score on my hands there we go <coughs> reading making sound make the instrument sound make the instrument sound cantabile uh, sing as it as it uh, so make make the instrument sing that's also one of my targets for this practicing session so it will be not about tempo, it will not about tempo reconstruction, maybe even not about notation, I cannot promise that I will not talk about that, because what happens is when you practice like that, you automatically come to a kind of balanced tempo, but we'll see where we go. And I will make a lot of mistakes, probably or not, I have no idea. There we go. So I made a few finger substitutions. It's hard for me to read this way. I'll figure it out, guys, but I, want to, I don't want to put my score in the right position <clears throat> because then you cannot follow the score along with me. Um, so finger substitutions for me and Bach are problematic in a way, and I'll try to avoid that. Um, certainly during this uh, practicing. It's an unbelievable theme, eh? so melancholic.
you feel this like relaxed moving forward that's what I'm, I'm trying to also release every tension where you when you play you sometimes are caught by the music you're in the music it should happen by itself and it's fine it should not be imposed and sometimes when you play I mean it's a very natural thing that there is this tension between the movement that you want to feel you want to be in and sometimes you're an outsider of the movement and the thing is let it go and then it comes back by itself that's it's um, it happens only by being very relaxed. So enjoy the movement. That's what I'm trying to do as well. Like just the proceeding, proceeding the notes like one after the other. first thing. So I'm stopping all the time because I'm losing, um, how do you say that, would I phrase that? Um, I'm losing the structure in my mind, I'm getting distracted. 
which is not it's not uncommon it's such a complex piece with all the team entrances and then in canon and then reverse and reverse in canon and i want to follow all of that because you need to hear that when you hear all the entrances then it's fun re-listening to a fugue but it, it requires a lot of mental space even though i know the piece so i need to stick to that need to stick to the structure more and that's i'm practicing that as well okay there we go again Sorry, he sharp. By the way, if you hear some gunfire, that's very remotely the Belgian army is practicing, it's protecting me from God knows what kind of invasion that Belgium is. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to make a political statement here, but knowing that these soldiers are shooting there with dummy uh, bullets, you know, for what enemy. Anyways, not wanting, wanting to go there. Probably has a purpose, but that's what you hear sometimes. And now it's a little bit, a little bit dum dum pam pam. It's getting heavy because of the fingering, not the fingering, but I want to play a little bit more legato, or more cantabile, legato in this 18th century sense. It's like always with a little bit of uh, start of the of the of the of the of the tone, like a little bit of articulation. But on the clavichord, it's 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 it's, it's different from the organ. But anyways, I'm not digressing on that. And then you get this. I want to stick to the same note before going to the other one a little bit too long and then every note gets heavy and on the clever chord it's like you've been being punished immediately for that. So I'm going to go a little bit back and keep my hand not too heavy, not too light, somewhere in the middle and release when it's necessary. Soprano theme, middle voice, in canon. Reverse team. Release. 
release. So four finger, four finger. So this mistake was not because of playing a wrong note, it was just the release of the C-sharp was a little bit too late and then I couldn't prepare good enough anymore. That's, that's how difficult the clavichord actually is if you want to play pieces like this. But it's, if, if you manage it's fine. You just need to, this is a critical piece obviously. Middle voice reversed theme. Unbelievable here, huh? Upper voice. Reverse, upper voice reverse. Large bass. It's hard to, to, to announce all the um, theme entrances, but it's fascinating, eh? especially here it's everywhere. But it's very cryptical fugue, like very dense. And if you just listen to it, you, you, you might miss a lot of these entrances. But it's, I think, essential that in a way you hear them and you get dragged in as a listener into the focus and the concentration the player, player has to show because of this complexity. I mean, in this case, I'm not, I'm not sure what was the easiest job composing or playing. I'm kind of joking, but it's, it's, uh, you have to work, like, com constantly keep your attention there. And at the same time, relax enough so you play it cantably and it's not getting too heavy. Uh, releases of the notes is essential to that and, and still hear everything. Luckily, this is only a three voice fugue. I'm here, by the way. Soft middle voice. Reversed. 
number five is reversed, the piano. Middle voice, upper voice. So this is difficult because not only the structure is complex, the, 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 the notes are going really right from each other. So you have little support within the hands, like the middle voice, but on the clavichord you shouldn't go too deep into the key. And so keeping a little bit, because then you, then you get like a really heavy sound and uh, that's hard to make the distinction between accentuated notes and not accentuated notes. So I should go a little bit back without losing the length of the notes because if I release the key there is no sound anymore so uh, here this is really on the edge really like, like in terms of difficulties and then of course the, 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 the notes you should read the notes that's, that's of course a minor problem it's just a matter of getting used to it but um, all of that makes this passage here really really complex Sometimes I mean, then when you then relax, it's so easy suddenly.
unbelievable music. So in some terms of tempo, I am not so sure yet. I have the tendency to speed up a little bit towards the end. But here you have, that's for later, make, just, make, you just have to make my mind up and then say, okay, that's my tempo. The beginning I like really slow, it's so nice. Even playing in this kind of 8-8. Eight, eight. But at the end I speed up a little bit, but that's for later. Here it's unbelievable, you have this enlargement, this enlargement of the theme is also in canon and then it comes also in canon and in the original uh, rhythmical pattern and then it gets it and then you have a certain, in a certain way, remember when I played the swelling pieces, the Ritzerkar and the, uh, the uh, choral, um, a few weeks ago, I, I mean practicing session two or three, you can check it out if you watch this much later, but there you have also these long notes and the development underneath them and the tension you get, the positive tension then like you have this, this three-dimensional structure suddenly and you have this at the end of this piece it's, it's in, in there as well in this sense of course harmonically this is so, for that time like crazy and not only because it is in that key but um, in this structure giving the theme in an enlarged form is of course not something very exceptional, but then developing the other uh, voices, like if nothing happened in those voices with the long notes, and it gives such a nice um, pattern. And I would say the clavichord is, of course, the tone is short, relatively short compared to a, to a harpsichord. And so, but you gain transparency there. Um, let me just do it from here. Difficult position here. So there's also with the clavichord, you need to position your fingers very well. Like here is difficult. You can I cannot go here with with the F. I never with with the, with the E sharp. You never get this right. So I have to come here or even play five five. Such a nice ending, and then you have the reverse bass and uh, enlarge. Sorry, upper voice reversed in the original rhythm. The bass immediately follows the original rhythm. The middle voice will get the canon in uh, in large format. Is that I don't know the correct English, but you know what I mean. Here we go. is in the upper voice. You have a kind of uh, entrance here, double, upper voice, middle voice. And now,
such a liberation at the end of this piece. It's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable, this piece of music. It's unbelievable. But it can be one of the most boring fugues if you don't do it right. Like all the notes are just like in one block, massive block that you cannot like, you just take like the entire piece and it doesn't, regardless of tempo. Um, of course, the slower you do, the more difficult it becomes, but also the more opportunities you have to just showcase it. Shall we just do it one more time? And let's see how the piece develops. I, I, I believe my tempo at the end might be a little bit too fast for the beginning, but we're going to try and I have no idea where I will end at the end. Difficult. Concentration lap. There we go. This is of course not okay. 
And here are the spots where I think like my tempo is just too fast now. Too, too much on the Vanalegro feel, but anyways, we're trying. minutes in it's, yeah time flies when you when you start playing these pieces so um, this is this is one of the most complex of I would say challenging pieces of the entire book of course at the end you have the B minor fugue with this uh, kind of atonal <laughs> theme it's unbelievable that's very hard as well and then you have the B flat minor which is a five voice fugue and I believe more an organ piece than maybe a keyboard piece. But anyways, the organ and clavichord, they have exchangeable or, or I would say what works really great at the organ is maybe less at the, at the clavichord, um, but vice versa. So it's, it's I'm, that's the reason why I want to record it to clavichord and definitely want to redo it on organ as well. Um, Unbelievable music, unbelievable music. So uh, I'm not yet finished with this one, certainly not regard to tempo. I think this is possible, this tempo. I should check it with the metronome, practice a little, a few times with the metronome just to make sure that I'm not speeding up. 
I mean, it's so complex. In order to keep your tempo, you have to take a little bit of distance, you have to feel the pulse. But here I'm doing so many stuff at the same time, uh, getting caught up in like the movement and in, like the excitement of the music maybe at the end, and it might impact. Uh, like I could see when this piece would have been written much later in the 19th century, like even towards like 1860, 1870, Max Reger. I mean, we are, we are going there. Eh? I mean, it's not the same, but it's like, like this, this German type of micro focus on things. That's the reason why the clavichord probably was developed there more than in any other country. It's just focusing on points and on, on things and like bringing it like to, to an extremity. Of course, Reger is the end of it. Eh? You go from, from Bach to Beethoven to Max Reger, in fact. But then there you could say like, Max Reger probably would have written like Accelerando till the end. It's possible. But it's of course not a, not a practice here. It's not what Bach had in mind. It was not, not a practice that was like um, existing in those days. So I have to find a, a balance between what I feel at the end and what I feel at the beginning and bring that together and see what works best. And um, still time for that. At the same time, Belgian army is still practicing. What a difference. Again, this channel is not about politics, but I mean, if we weren't capable as humans to do this, I mean, we did a bad job in living together on this planet in a way, because we can do this, we can embrace each other worldwide and just live as one people on this one planet and then we don't need these uh, machines anymore anyways it's now oh i have to stop because i have to pick alberto from the bus station he's coming to my place we are going to record the fifth symphony yes again four times <laughs> it's no kidding we, the first uh, version is of course of Inter on YouTube, second version we did, and then we, you could say we lifted to increase our level, it's of course not really what it is, but we, we find our zenith, our focus point, we did the fifth again, we did the eighth again, the fourth again, the first and the second again, and now the fifth, because it's the fifth symphony, we have some slight tempo, things here and there and it's so interesting guys i mean i'm not going to dive into this right now at the end of this practicing session but it's really really cool to see once what we believe are you're there where the music starts i mean around a certain tempo starts to build and you get the tempo from the composer and then you have the character and if you listen to the recording then and for instance i believe in the last movie we go from 484 it's not really the Presto, it's Allegro, uh, the Fifth Symphony, uh, 84, we go to 88, 90, and you would say, like, this doesn't matter. I would say that myself, but when you listen to the result, when the reprise comes, this majest majestic feeling, like, there is not, it's a little bit lighter suddenly, and so just a few lines on the metronome already are enough to change the piece, and now for a concert, it wouldn't matter. But since this is a recording of the fifth, we want to, certainly my young Italian friend, want to stick to, um, there's no, no room for negotiation even. And I don't want to because we have the possibility to bring this to any level that we want. And so I'm going to enjoy tonight practicing some uh, Beethoven 5 with Alberto and tomorrow record it on Thursday probably as well. And then in the weekend we're going to make some videos also and that's a secret for you here because if you're in here now still in the video um can announce it because uh, you are one of the hardcore fans of the channel we are going to prepare the kickstarter video for the chopin preludes that will be the first release officially it will go on digital platforms first and then we come to you here on youtube to um well, see if you would like to have a CD or vinyl disc and then we're going to launch your Kickstarter if that happens. If it doesn't happen, no problem. We go to the next recording and so we will see and we come back in the future with another opportunity to make this into a vinyl or CD. But that's the way to go. Looking forward to that together with you. Thanks for being here as always. Looking forward to seeing you in the next practicing session again. See you later. Bye.